Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also, and also be with you. Today, we celebrate in the Christian Church the sixth Sunday of Easter. I pray that you and your family are doing well and trusting in our Lord during these pandemic times. Because of COVID-19, sadly, we are not able to worship personally our Lord here at church. But we continue using technology to bring to you God's Word. Before we begin our live stream service, Pastor Scholz, Gregory and I would like to offer our Christian sympathies to Douglas, his sisters and family because of the passing of Betty, who was a long time member of our congregation. We are going to miss her. During this difficult time, for Betty's family and friends, let us remember the words of St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, which say, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Let us begin our service, and wherever we are, we greet one another with the peace of Christ. Our opening hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty, number 790 from LSB.
difference in Christ, when you were baptized, your old sinful nature was buried with Christ when he died. When God the Father brought him back to life again, you were given his wonderful new life to enjoy. As we are in Dr. Luther's Catechism, by the power of baptism, our old self should be drowned and die by daily contrition and repentance, and a new person daily come forth and arise. Open your heart to God and confess your sin, that you might so arise. We confess our sins. We have a moment of silence for reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Mighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of the world, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, Grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for this sixth Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts, chapter 17. In Athens, the center of Greek in intellectualism, surrounded by statues of pagan gods and goddesses, Paul proclaimed that God does not live in temples built by hands and cannot be fashioned out of gold or silver or stone. God wants us to know him, the living God, through Jesus, whom he raised from the dead. The word of the Lord from Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 31. Now while Paul was waiting for them at, at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicureans and the Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athen Athenians and the foreigners who lived there 
would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of you, some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's epistle is from 1st Peter chapter 3. In today's epistle, Peter encourages us to be ready to speak out about our faith and hope and to back up our words with our daily living. There is an interesting sidelight to his saying, Christ was made alive by the Spirit and went and preached to the spirits in prison. It says that the first thing Jesus did when raised from dead was, was go into the camp of the enemy to proclaim his victory. It is because of these words that we say in the Apostle Creed, he descended into hell. The word of the Lord from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, who is there to harm you if you are a zealous for, for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet. Do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, 
now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, as is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers have been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel reading is from St. John's Gospel, the 14th chapter. In the upper room, Jesus spoke to his disciples of his imminent death, but promised he would come to them. They would see him and would fully understand when the spirit of truth would be given to them. We see and know Jesus through the same spirit. The word of the Lord from St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord. Lord. And Jesus speaks. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. We continue in singing him 848, Lord, who is loved through humble service.
peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The gospel text will be the basis for our message today from John 14, verses 15 to 21. Dear fellow redeemed, throughout the years, McDonald's has had many good commercials to sell their products. It started back in 1960 with, look for the golden arches. And of course, it was the signature feature of the first restaurants, and it is still an iconic feature of the restaurants today. Another memorable ad campaign was the Big Mac song. The song described how they made their signature burger. And after 40 years of being in business naturally, nationally and internationally, they launched the campaign that is still going on today. I'm loving it. Well, what would make you say, I'm loving it? The Big Mac, the all-day breakfast, the shamrock shakes, the Happy Meals. Our nation and our neighbors south of the border have so incorporated McDonald's into our lives that many people in other parts of the world associate McDonald's with North America. Christians also have a wonderful marketing opportunity. For many years, people have associated Christians with Jesus. And as Christians, we want to incorporate Jesus into our everyday life, loving him with all our hearts. And as we hear in John 14, verse 15, Jesus wants us to love him with the same love that he has for you. And we shall see this morning that a Christian's whole life is loving Jesus with the same love that he has for us. Now, when Jesus uses the word love here, he wants to explain that word carefully. English has one word for love, and probably we overuse it. It would not be unusual for, to hear a person say, I love pizza. I love chicken wings. I love fishing. I love the Knights, that is the hockey team. I love my husband, my wife. I love my family. And so we say, I love with different people and places. We probably don't like pizza in the same way that we like our favorite sport team, or even our children, or so we hope. You see, the Greek language has as many as five different words for this concept of love. Here we're dealing with the word agape. Agape love is really a self-sacrificing love, a one-way love. It isn't based on the quality or the value of the person that is loved. It is unearned and it is undeserved. God doesn't love us because we're so lovable. He loves us because he loves us. It's all his doing. It is not on us or how lovable we make ourselves. To love Jesus means to love Jesus no matter what. And now this love did not just simply come from us. In 1 John, we hear that we love because... Yes, he first loved us. And now that we have been given that love through Jesus, he tells us how we can love him back. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Notice the reason that Jesus gives us for following his commands. Now this may seem like God is demanding people to follow him, as though he were some tyrant or dictator waiting for his people to mess up. And when they do, he is all too happy to throw the book at them and to remind them of how far they have fallen. But no, Jesus first directs us to himself. If you love me. Now let's go back to Exodus 20. Because there you will see a similarity between what God did there and what Jesus did. Did here. In Exodus chapter 20, God did not start out with a law message. Rather, he started with gospel. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of slavery. 
See, the Ten Commandments were given as a way for Israel to now say thank you to God. Yet if we are comfortable on our own good works, a quick look at them can remind us how we have not always followed God's commands. If we think we love God and we say that we love God, we need to examine it. Do we show it by keeping everything that God commands of us? Or do we simply pick and choose like we might at a buffet at the Mandarin restaurant? Do we focus on certain laws but ignore other commands? Do we love Him when it would be a sacrifice to us? That is what agape love means after all. Love that sacrifices our own desires of the sinful nature. Drunkenness, laziness, gluttony, sinful desires, gossip, and a whole list of other sins. Love that sacrifices our time and finances in support of the ministry of the Lord. A love that sacrifices our talents for our own selfish purposes, but helps our neighbors. And a love that sacrifices comforts to stand up for the truth of God's word when everyone else pressures you to do wrong. Do we sacrifice for God? Do we always listen to Jesus? Or are there times when we hold back, or worse, intentionally and willfully ignore what God commands? Dear friends, how can we say that we love God when we have failed to keep His commands, when we have put self over God's Word? How can we say that we love God and Jesus when we fail to reach out to someone in love? How can we say we will be with Christ in heaven when we fail to listen to Him here? Well, let us go back to Christ. In verse 15, he pointed to himself. His perfect life of love gave me a perfect life of love. And when he suffered and he died, his prayer was not, I hope they follow you as perfectly as I did. No, his prayer was this, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And when our dear Savior rose from the dead, he declared that perfect life of love for me. He said, because I live, you also will live. Now this does not just look ahead to the resurrection of all people. This is talking about our life of love that we show in our lives. Christ's undeserved perfect life of love saves us from our imperfect lives. When God looks at us, He does not look upon our sins. Rather, He looks upon Christ's righteousness for me. But not only did Christ live a perfect life for me, He also calls on His Father to send the Holy Spirit to us. We read, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. As Jesus is talking about his suffering and death with his disciples, he reminds them that they would not be alone. They may have felt lonely that night after Jesus was arrested and betrayed. Ultimately, Jesus would rise from the dead and ascend into heaven. Then they truly may have felt alone. Well, this is really no different from parents when they are beginning to empty their nest. When you have a child in your home for the past 18 years, you have shared many memories with them. Their first steps, their first words, their first successes in life, their first failures and disappointments. You have gotten used to their presence all around you. You hear their music when they come home at night. You have played games, watched movies, and shared great times with them. And then, well, they may move away for college or university or to begin a career. And they grow up and they move out of the house. Where their bed was, an empty space resides. 
and where they used to eat, where they used to sit in the living room, a lonely void takes their place. The disciples had eaten with God. They had learned the truth from God. They had spent time with Jesus. They had gotten to know Jesus. They had relied on him for all their guidance and teaching. And soon he would be gone. And so they were afraid. They were afraid that they might forget what he had taught them. They may be afraid that their courage would disappear once he left them. My dear friends, maybe we might feel lonely in our life of love. We may feel that no one in the world accepts the truth of God's word, a point that Jesus made in this reading. We may don't because we cannot see him or see clear evidences of him, especially when everything in our lives make it seem like God is not in control or that there is no God. Maybe we have tried finding God in the wrong places, in the things of this world, in the ideas of the world, and in the material possessions that the world offers. Too often when we do this, we can easily become burned out regarding our faith when we put our hope in the physical evidence rather than in the certain promises of God. Dear brothers and sisters, hear this promise from Christ again this morning. I will not leave you as orphans. In other words, he did not leave us alone, he, but he came to us and he also ascends the Holy Spirit to us. First, let's talk about the Holy Spirit's work for a moment. We will soon talk about Pentecost, where Jesus sent the Holy Spirit upon his disciples in a powerful display. But the Holy Spirit was already at work in the disciples long before Pentecost. It was the Holy Spirit working through Christ's teachings that created faith in the disciples to believe that Jesus was the promised Messiah, the Anointed One, the Chosen One. And today, God sends the Holy Spirit not with powerful signs and wonders, but through the simple means of grace. The gospel preached in the word and proclaimed in the sacrament of baptism and holy communion. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that leads us to love Christ and everything that he teaches us. The Holy Spirit creates faith, but we also have this added extra comfort. Jesus said, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Through baptism, the Holy Spirit has created faith in you. Now, not only does the Holy Spirit dwell in you, but also Christ dwells in you. Christ's and the Holy Spirit's presence strengthens the new person inside of us, that new person created by the Spirit. That new person inside of us sees these commands of our Lord not as dreadful burdens, but rather as joyful opportunities for you and for me to express our thanks to God for what he has done for us. He has not only lived a perfect life for you, he has given you his Holy Spirit, and yes, he dwells in you. When you are in doubt about your faith, and I know I have said it before, but it bears repeating, go to the source of your faith, the Holy Spirit. Go to his workshop, to the word and sacraments. Go to them and be strengthened. Strengthen that connection to Christ so that you may flourish with works of the Holy Spirit. And as you grow in those fruits of faith, May it lead others to see that faith that God has worked in you through the Holy Spirit. And yes, maybe you may not eloquently preach the gospel message like the Apostle Paul did. You might not be the great Christian philosopher like John was, but you and the works that God does through you might be the only Bible people will read. Through the Bible, God will strengthen you 
so that through your whole life they can see and say they are loving Christ. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds firmly in faith in Christ Jesus. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us now confess with confidence and joy the faith into which we are baptized. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with prayers at this moment. O oh Lord, God Almighty, you are remembered by your great deeds in the history of the human race. In, in times of trouble, you delivered your chosen people from the hands of their enemies. Through your Son, you relieved many of their physical and spiritual ills. For your great power, Display both past and present, and accept our glorious praise. We confess, O oh Lord, that we have not always extolled your name among our fellow citizens. The results of your power among us have given us hope in our trials and tribulations. Even so, we have often failed to give an account to others for the reason of the hope that is within us. We rejoice in your mercies, which give us the assurance of the forgiveness of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being righteous, he gave his life for us. Being righteous, you have merited our love, yet we have failed to show our love by keeping your commandments. Forgive us our failures, O Lord. Send your Holy Spirit that he may help us to express our love for you in word and deed. May he abide with us that we may walk in newness of life. May the lonely experience your presence and the sick your healing. May the faint-hearted be filled with courage to extol your name. Holy God, Faithful Creator, remember all who suffer illness, affliction, and injury in our congregations. Especially, we pray for Erin as she continues to recover from a double lung transplant. For Allison as she deals with her cancer treatment. For Allison's family who are going through difficult times because of her illness. For Ralph and Lynn. For Doreen. For Albert. For Anne. For Shirley, for Matthew and Marisa, for Rainer, for Marianne and family, for Anne and Mike, for Ritva, Risto and family, for Jean and Anna, for Peter, Shirley and Keith, for Bill and Sandy, for Harry, for Stacy and family, for Imogen and family, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Walter and Donna, for Christina, for Matthew, Bill and Vicky, during Bill's recovery, for Maria, for Dennis and Sarah, for Nancy, for Patricia, for Sandra, Sarah, Grace, Frank, Melissa, Marsha, Becky, Dorothy, who is Sharon's mother, for Anna, for Joyce and Mel, for Ligia, for Delbert, and for all who are struggling with loneliness and fear during this pandemic or other sickness, 
and for those we name in our hearts. Grant healing and recovery according to your will, and strengthen their faith, and protect them from every assault of the evil one upon body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, your Son pray for his people before his death, that they might be sustained in life and faith. Hear our prayers on behalf of all the families of these congregations. Bless their life, be with them in success and adversity, and preserve them in repentance, faith, and hope all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our Lord. prayer. Holy Lord, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially for Michael, Matthew, Frank, Dan, Matthew, Katarina, Katrine, Haley, Susanna, John, Grace, Jonathan, and Yuri. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace, strengthen their trust in your goodness, and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, sustain with your love those who are celebrating another year of married life. We remember Mike and Iris. We remember Joshua and Mariah, and as well for Jordi and Nancy, that you strengthen their love and never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the faithful departed, especially we pray for Douglas, his sisters and family, due to the passing of Betty on Tuesday, May 12th. Let us give God all thanks and praise, asking that we may join her when God call us in the new heavens and the new earth, where the sign of God's everlasting covenant of peace and the eternal abatement of his wrath through the sacrifice of his Son fills all hearts with an ending joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-given death of your Son for our salvation, we pray you to strengthen our faith and to make our hearts bold, that we may not fear, but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood, until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We have concluded our live stream service, and I wish you all the best to you at home or wherever you are. God bless you and take care of yourself. And we are final hymn, Go My Children, with my blessings. Number 922 from the NSP.